This is our field investigator training video on investigative ethics and API's ethical policies. The intended audience is all API field investigators and anyone else interested in UFO field investigation, how to proceed, and for this video especially, how not to proceed. This is probably the most important video you will watch as part of your training. So if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to ask. Complying with these policies some of the time isn't good enough. It needs to be 100% of the time from the opening of the case into the indefinite future. All this information is available in written form on our website at aerial-phenomenon.org and we'll have links below this video where you can find the material. We try to keep our common sense ethical policies simple and easy to understand. You shouldn't have to be a lawyer to be a field investigator, so we mostly state the policies in terms of do's and don'ts. But first, it's important to understand why we think this is important and what the priorities are. Our first two priorities are the well-being of the witness and the privacy and anonymity of the witness. That's it. We strive to do no harm to the witness's well-being, and we do everything we can to protect their privacy. These two things should not conflict. That's it in a nutshell. But now we're going to unpack the nutshell a bit. Why? Well, an important part of motivation is just because it's the right thing to do. And we want to sleep at night. We ask ourselves, how would we want to be treated under the same circumstances? Our ethical policies also benefit us by helping us to cultivate witnessed trust. Many people do not come forward because they fear losing standing among their peer group and communities, and that it might even damage their careers. You might recall the 2008 presidential campaign during which Democratic candidate Dennis Kucinich gave an honest answer to a debate moderator's question about a UFO sighting. We don't know exactly how this affected Kucinich's campaign, but a common narrative is that the incident scuttled what little chance he had not only to win, but to join the Obama cabinet. Many people feel that owning to a UFO sighting, even with a conservative interpretation of what they saw, will similarly damage their prospects. So, assuring anonymity is important if we want people to report their sightings to us. Privacy includes anonymity, but is a little broader. It means not using the contact information the witness provides us with for any purpose not implicitly agreed to by submitting the report. That leads us to the concept of personally identifying information, or PII. PII is any information that might lead to the identity of the witness. This includes the real names of colleagues, friends, and family members, the name of an employer or place of employment, occupation, or even the approximate location of the witness residence. For example, if we release that information that the witness was a female optometrist in a particular small town, it would not be hard to narrow down or even determine the witness identity. The hard and fast rule is that we don't release any witness PII to the public. The information is either redacted or obfuscated. For example, not giving the exact GPS coordinates of the sighting if it occurred at or near the witness residence. When in doubt, though, redact. So, with all the above in mind, here are some ethical do's and don'ts. The do items are straightforward. One, always listen respectfully. Whatever doubts you have, keep them to yourself. Two, 
Hold your questions until the witness has completed their narrative of the events. At first, questions should be for clarification of that narrative. 3. Assure the witness that their anonymity will be maintained. And here are a set of don'ts. 1. Avoid doing anything that risks contaminating the witness memory. In particular, do not offer a theory of the case while the interview and evidence collection is in process. 2. Do not recommend or attempt to perform memory regression therapy or hypnotic regression of any kind. 3. Do not attempt to serve as the witness therapist. Encourage them to seek out qualified professionals instead. 4. When conducting a site visit, be discreet and inconspicuous. Don't stand out. We'll have more about this in the site visit training. 5. Do not use witness PII for any purpose other than conducting the investigation and any follow-up that is required. 6. Redact or obfuscate all PII from any information made public, whether in written, audio, or video form. With rare exceptions, do not include information from the supplemental questionnaire in the report, and make sure it is redacted before release. 7. If the sighting occurred at or near the witness residence or place of work, don't give the precise GPS coordinates in the public report. 8. If you have photos or videos of the witness or people close to them, these must be redacted. 9. If you are making an audio or video recording of an interview, ask permission before you start the recording. 10. Never ask a witness for money and don't accept money if it is offered. 11. If a third party approaches you about a case, do not release any non-public information to them and refer the contact to API leadership. That's a pretty long list and it's been edited down. We could add other do's and don'ts, but it should be clear by now that this is just a set of common sense practices for respecting witness well-being and privacy, and that is what you need to keep in the foreground. You are not on your own. If you are ever in doubt about what to do ethically in a case, let's discuss it. If you have suggestions about how to improve the training material, you can comment below or contact API using our contact form. The link is below. If you want to use this video or excerpts from it in your own material, you can, so long as you give us attribution.